Hey guys, it's Will with Military Lawn Cuts. And in today's video, I am going to be sharing with you exclusive content. And let me tell you why that is. So Larissa and I had the privilege of speaking at a conference called Landscape Summit, hosted by Mike Andes and a co-pilot. And on there, um, we shared a lot of great information on basically what we uh, learned starting our second location, how to manage people, how to delegate and relinquish control. So that way you can start to work on your business instead of always in your business. Now, the ticket price to attend this event was $400. It was a two-day event, and Larissa and I were actually one of the keynote speakers um, out of about 12 speakers that went up on stage. And uh, so this is about a 28-minute long um uh, talk on this topic, and we are going to be sharing it with you completely free. So if you find any kind of value in this video, can you please help us out and just hit that like button. Enjoy the show. What is going on, everybody? Can you guys hear me? Awesome, awesome. Who is fired up in this building right now? All right, listen. This is the Super Bowl of the lawn care and landscaping industry. I'm gonna ask you again. Who is fired up in this building? Here we go. Let's go. I heard somebody say let's go. Look, there's no other place I'd rather be right here, right now, than with this hungry group of winners, all right? So I'm, it's an absolute pleasure to be here. Mike, thank you so much for the opportunity. And uh, what we're talking about today is what we learned starting a second location. This is real life experience with uh, myself and my gorgeous, beautiful wife right here. So let's jump into it. Uh, thank you, honey, for that. And thank you, uh, everyone, for the introduction and having us here. Um, so on the screen, I'm not gonna go into detail on every single one, but you can see back in 2019, Will started the business by himself. Um, and what he was able to do on his own. The next year, I was able to step away from my job and be able to come help, and through COVID, we were thankfully able, able to grow. Um, God had his hand in our business 100%, and ever since then, we've just continued to grow along the way. So earlier this year, we were able to purchase our first headquarters, which was super exciting for us. We live in an HOA. We had six trucks parked at our house. We had employees parking at our house, um, doing meetings in our garage and everything. So we're very thankful to be able to be at this opportunity. All right, so uh, why we started a second location. So we basically wanted a business that runs without us. So um, obviously you can't be at two places at once. So building multiple locations is, is ideally the goal. Uh, we didn't want to be the one out there actually pushing the mower um, for years. So our goal right now is to have 10 corporately owned locations uh, with the option down the road, if we would like to, to either A, franchise or B, uh, license the company. Um, and after we built uh, one successful business that was already doing $630,000, it just simply made sense. We had already built all the systems. We had already, we know how to hire people. We know how to manage people. So why not just copy and paste it? It just, we already had the model. Um, so I would tell you, start with your end in mind, and through this whole presentation that we're about to give you guys, if you don't want to do multiple locations and just want a business that runs without you, I think you'll find great value in these next few slides here. So how many of you guys actually saw our episode on Business Boot Camp with Mike Andes? Wow, a lot of you guys. That's awesome. That's awesome. Um, so it was a great process. We're very thankful that we had that opportunity. It has not been smooth sailing since, uh, the whole time at least. Um, like I said, we were very blessed to get that headquarters, but the process to get to that was not easy. Um, so there were some learning curves in there. There were mistakes that we made, but it got us to where we are today. So what are some of those mistakes that we made? So these are uh, the, one, some of the biggest mistakes that we made starting our second location. Uh, we failed to outline clear KPIs or key performance indicators. We failed to define specific tasks for our general manager to focus on. We failed to create a scorecard for the general manager with daily and weekly expectations. The numbers do not lie. How do we track the performance of our general manager that we're hiring for our main location? 
We failed to do any of that stuff. We failed to establish a backup plan if the GM leaves, which he did, and uh, obviously set us back. We didn't have proper training in place for our general manager and things of that nature. Um, we had our business run from his house. So you can imagine us going out and running it at his house and he come in and, and give us his re resignation two week notice, not, not even a two week notice. It, it just, it, it, we had all of our uh, trucks and everything parked at his house. So we were scrambling, trying to find a new location. Um, just don't mix friendship and business and, and things like that. So not, not, not a good thing. Um, and then, uh, yeah, we, we, uh, when we hired our, our GM, we basically uh, built it up to where he was doing more of the office. It's, that's not the case. From a zero to $700,000 business, that general manager needs to still be going out into the field and actually producing, actually making money. The success completely hinges on the general manager you choose. So later on in here, we're going to tell you what attributes to look for. All right, so time equals money. We've all heard this uh, phrase before. This gets magnified and accelerated when you start opening multiple locations. Everyone has 24 hours in a day. It's not that millionaires and billionaires have more time in a day than you or I, or even that they work harder than you or I, because oftentimes they don't. It's the fact that they do higher leverage activities and make higher level decisions that significantly propel their business further and faster versus someone who is just willing to do hard work. So what are some lower leverage tasks that we were able to delegate? And I know you've heard multiple people talk about delegation, it's because it's so important. So little things that we used to do when it was being ran at our house was Will would go out there every morning and sharpen all the mower blades making sure that we had our, our teams kind of ready to go in the morning. Um, we no longer have to do that. We have a team member trained. We bought a whole new machine on it. Um, maintaining the equipment, scraping the mower decks, doing the oil changes, taking broken equipment, and um, that is outside of our, our, our skill set of maintenance, and bringing that in to go get fixed. We're not going to have to drive the, the 20 minutes to go bring it in. So having somebody else run those errands for us. Also, on the office side of answering the calls and the emails, some of those are so easy that it becomes a tedious task and it would tie some, us up to where we can pay someone else in our office to do that for us. So that helped a ton. Um, so my biggest tip for you guys, if you see yourself struggling in the amount of time that you have in the day and trying to get all your work done or your tasks done, is keep track of what you are doing in your day. Will did this on a whiteboard. He kept, he's like, okay, I did this, I did this. Anything that was less or something that you could pay someone $15 an hour, $17 an hour, whatever that number is that you choose, delegate that stuff off to somebody else, okay? It'll make your lives a lot easier. All right, so what higher leverage activities did we start to focus on? So hiring A and B players, creating that culture with inside your organization. We started to track KPIs weekly and monthly, which we'll talk about later on down, down the road in the slides. Um, improving training for GMs, because newsflash, your business is a revolving door. There's people that are coming in, and then there's people that are going out. You have to have a process of how they're getting trained, especially the GM, which the success hinges on, the, on your location, hinges on that GM. So that's including field and office staff as well. Re-engineering workflows and building in automations. Now that you have multiple locations, starting a second location, every efficiency that you can improve starts to scale. Um, cutting out overhead time and focusing on production of your team at all levels. There's so many activities you can do in a business, but does it make money? Literally, does it make money? We need to be focusing on the ones that push the business forward. Delegation, uh, relinquishing control, there's a great book called Great CEOs Are Lazy. And uh, in there it talks about if that individual or team member can do it to 80% satisfactory and efficiency and quality, you need to hand that task off so you can focus on higher level stuff to really move the business forward. All right, one location versus two locations. So when you're starting a second location, all right, there's one question that I continue to ask myself every single day when I'm doing these tasks. 
If we had 10 locations, would I be able to do this same exact task the same exact way? And oftentimes, I find myself saying, no, there's no way I can do that. I'd have to hire a full-time person to do all of these tasks. And so how do we get the same outcome in less time? The truth is more than 50% of your systems will change and evolve when you start to open multiple locations. Um, I'm gonna share one example here. So um, in our personal business, um, we had this really long, extensive hiring process to where um, we had so many questions we had to ask them. And we had all these applicants coming in. We had this whole follow-up process that we had to do. Like if they didn't answer, we would have to call them back and text them and, and things like that. We've gone away with that to where when a new applicant applies, there's three things that we do when they don't answer the phone. We text them, we leave them a voicemail, and we send them an email, and we move on to the next candidate. I don't have time to follow up with all of these people that aren't answering the phones. The ball's in their court. It's now their responsibility to come back to us. All right. So when you guys are starting uh, another location, everything that you're doing carries a weight to that task. So when you're, when you're doing multiple things at multiple locations, there's gonna have a bigger impact on those. So we put together a, a diagram for you guys to kind of see it visually, and I'll let Will explain that one. Yeah, so this is your weight at one location. When you own one business, this is what it looks like. Your load or your tasks or your activities throughout the day. Okay, at one location, you get an outcome level, which is, at the end here, if you look, an average return on effort. That's just what it is at one location. You put that in, you get an average return back. This is what it looks like at two locations, and three locations, and four locations. What does it do? It starts to compound, okay? You do the same exact task, that same exact load, but now it has more weight. Do you see how the outcome level is higher? It's now compounding a return on effort. I'll give you one example of this. So in our business, when we um, are prospecting people that are coming in to, to, to come and work from us, we, we shoot a 30 second video on why we're different. Hey, we're a faith-based company, we'll never work on Sunday. We, we, our average pay for our, our team is 21 to $28 per hour. This gets their ears perked, right? You shoot a 30 second video and you send it to them before they even get to the interview so they can actually show up. And what happens is at one location, you get an average return on that video. But if you're someone like Mike Andes, who has over 130 franchise locations or multiple locations, you shoot that one video for 30 seconds and it now compounds 10X, right? Depending on how many locations that you have. So higher level task equals greater outcome. Just like the fulcrum and the teeter-totter level works for higher level activities, it's the same for inefficiencies in your business when you start doing multiple locations. I'll give you one example of this. I was out literally two weeks ago, three weeks ago, training a new hire, part-time guy who's coming out, how to, how to mow, basically. I was out there out, out in the field with him. And he would get down to the end of the, the lawn, pop up the 21-inch the mower, and take like five steps to turn around and then keep going. And I saw that, I'm like, no, there's no way. Like there's 50 turns on a property. There's a turn there, 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 there. I mean, you're doing all these stripes, right? So um, I, I literally easily shaved five minutes off of it to where, where, hey, when you get down, it's all on your shoulders. Pop up the mower and swing your arms around. You literally take one step and you keep moving. Speed, speed over accuracy, right? But we still wanna, get, wanna have that good quality. So what I was able to do easily was shave two minutes off that property. And what I wanna show you here is with this efficiency is if I can save somebody two minutes with good training, two minutes on a lawn, and they do 10 lawns a day, which is what they do at our company in its solo, five days a week when they work, 32 weeks out of the year, which is how many mowing visits there are in our season down in Texas, with five mow teams. Right now we have five mow trucks times two locations. That's 500 and 33 hours that you get back in the year by just teaching somebody how to shave two minutes off of a property, okay? To take it a step further, we use P for P, and our average efficiency rate is 75%. If we did a 75% efficiency rate at 80 an hour, which is what we charge, $80 per man hour to mow lawns, that equates to almost $32,000 for just teaching somebody how to get two minutes back on, on each lawn. $32,000 back that you get each year. 
Okay, so did you see how important it was um, to have the, inef or how inefficiencies can affect your business? Did anyone in here think two minutes could add up to $32,000? It's a lot. So especially as you continue to grow, ver one location versus multiple locations. Um, so I'm gonna use this as an example since Will is a, was a paratrooper. So if we have to pull our chute every time to come down and save someone in the business because we're having people call off or they're sick and they can't perform their shift, it's gonna affect the business overall. They're not gonna learn to be able to cover down for those things and cover each other when that happens. Unless you're in like dire emergency where it's all hands on deck, that's okay. But if we are constantly pulling our shoots to come and save the day every day, there's no one behind us that's coming to pull their parachute and cover down for us, which means we aren't able to be in the office to start booking interviews and do hiring to really fill that position that needs to be filled instead of us going out there and doing it. Um, so the most important thing is if you are going to have to go out there and cover down, make sure that you're, you're looking at things on how you can improve them. So how can I make this more efficient for my guys? How can I make this easier? How can I make their day better and easier on them? I think that's very important to keep in mind. Um, and then that way it allows you guys to focus on pulling those higher levers like we were talking about, doing those higher level, higher level tasks in the business. All right, so progress over perfection. When you're starting a second location, it's all about progress over perfection. So when we started our second location, we didn't do it right. We started it in the middle of summer. We did not have a separate truck. We were borrowing our truck from our main location. We didn't even have insurance yet set up. We didn't have a GM yet set up. But as of today, right here, right now, we're still getting new customers at our new location that are booking every single week. So do not wait for the perfect time to start your second location. A lot, there's, um, if, if, if you have to wait for that perfect time to start the location, it's never going to sustain through the storms, okay? I would advocate that if you started the second location when you have three employees walking off the job, your general manager quit, two bad star reviews, and you can weather the storm through that while still opening a second location, that is what will continue to, to uh, weather the storms as they come. I thought this was a really cool um, kind of a feature here. The guy on the left is the guy that just, just started taking steps. Just, just start moving it forward, getting the LLC, doing what you need to do to start multiple locations. The guy on the right is like, wait, I gotta wait till everything is perfect before they even start. Just, just get started. So some of the GM tasks and responsibilities that we are going to be requiring for our second location and when we are hiring for our main location. So they have to be able to do at least minimum of 25 budgeted hours in their work week. So a couple of things that will go towards those budgeted hours is going to be if they're helping down in the field, so mowing, weed control, uh, landscaping. And then, so producing money for the business, but also doing things that are going to help propel the business. So hiring, um, doing in-person interviews, doing estimates to also get more landscape jobs in. So whether they're drive-by or an in-person, those budgeted hours will differ. Um, other things that aren't gonna be part of that 25 budgeted hours, so more of the uh, behind the scenes office side, is going to be scheduling and dispatching jobs. Um, that puzzle piece that it, uh, can be kind of a struggle sometimes, but I think it's fine when I had to do it. Um, equipment maintenance, so that way we're not having to do that. The GM can do it and eventually delegate that task to somebody else. Um, doing team meetings, keeping that positive work environment, that is super important to me. I've worked in an environment that wasn't a good work environment, and I never want that for my team. Um, doing orientation, training videos, managing yellow slips, which goes into like a quality control. You're holding your team accountable for the quality of work that they're doing on that property. And then holding them accountable with disciplinary actions if needed. So the five attributes that we look for in a GM are reliable. They have to be reliable. They have to be hungry. They gotta want it. They have to be humble uh, and coachable. They need to be a self-starter and they need to take extreme ownership. Those are the five, yep, five or four, uh, basically five, five attributes that, that we definitely look for in when hiring or making that decision on who's gonna be the GM. 
All right, so build redundancy in your business. When our GM left at our main location, it, it definitely set us back. We didn't have a proper training um, to kind of replace him. Overstaff your locations. When you're at two locations, I cannot physically go down when it's July and it's 100 degrees in Texas and cover down on both locations. I can't do that. So we have to be overstaffed during the busiest time of the year, which is from March all the way to October, okay? So just make sure those are, those are definitely things that you definitely wanna do. All right, so don't be the bottleneck in your business. Build a business that can be duplicated and uh, basically copy and paste. If you're the only one that can do it, either get rid of it or simplify it and build training around it. So clearly define your services. When we opened our second location, we, got, we tried to get fancy with it. We said, hey, let's add a couple other services. But what we found out is every time you add a new service, it adds four layers of complexity. Let me give you an example. If we were gonna add SOD, which we don't anymore, we got rid of it, there is four levels of complexity that now comes with that. Number one, you, your field team needs to know how to do it, right? That's, that's complexity number one. Number two is your office needs to be educated and, and trained enough to communicate effectively over the phone when a customer has questions about that service. Number three is there has to be some type of training process now around it. So again, adding more complexity in your business. And then number four is the inventory that comes with it, right? Now you gotta store uh, pallets, you gotta get uh, sprinkler heads because um, you, know, you gotta flag sprinkler heads, sometimes fix them with sod and things like that. So there's more inventory that now comes in. So um, yeah, basically just build a business that can be duplicated, especially when you're going to multiple locations. All right, so this is the key KPIs to track at each stage. So mind you, these are, so we have two locations. Our main location is in profit mode, all right? These are the KPIs we're tracking. I'm not gonna go too deep into the KPIs. There's probably here that, people here that can do it better, but this is probably a good thing to take a picture of. At our second location, we're in profit mode, all right? So we track different things. At our main location, um, number of yellow slips, budget hours completed, attrition rate, close ratio, total sales. Really, on this side, all we care about is two things. What is our attrition rate? How many customers are going out the back door? And then the second one is really upselling our existing clients. So those are the two things we're focusing on on our profit, profit uh, location. All right, on the, on, the, uh, on the growth mode location, these are the uh, KPIs that we track. Number of new clients, close ratio, total sales, labor, capital. You need money in the bank when you're, when you're in growth mode. Otherwise, you know, if you lose that money, you lose the oxygen, okay? Um, I will tell you, pulling these KPIs, I, we've used three softwares before, Yardbook, Service Autopilot, and Copilot. I will tell you that Copilot saves me time. And when we talk about the slide earlier, time equals money. Copilot has everything in the cockpit. I can see all my KPIs. Very attractive to somebody that wants to own multiple locations, okay? All right. So I'm not gonna go too deep into this one. We just wanted to put this up there for you guys. If anyone is gonna be looking to start a second or even a third, fourth location, this is a, a checklist that we go off of. We created this for ourselves on some of the steps that we need to take um, instead of using our, our brain capacity of trying to remember everything. So if you guys wanna take a screenshot, go ahead. If you didn't get it, get it from your neighbor. <laughs> All right. So this is the mindset of when you're opening a second location, all right? I used to run from difficult conversations. I used to be afraid of them. I didn't like it, I don't like confrontation. What I am learning is as you grow in scale and you're getting more team members on your team, it, the difficult conversations is an opportunity for you to grow your leadership. So before I would have a difficult conversation, I'd be firing somebody, I'd be, do, I'd be putting somebody on a performance improvement plan, maybe once a month, once every two months. Now I'm doing it two or three times a week. I'm just growing as a leader. Use as a lot, an, an opportunity for you guys when you're having those difficult conversations. Um, number two, acquire the mindset of a veteran, all right? So we've all, we all have to do things for the first time, and it's very hard. The first time a, a customer leaves a bad review, the first time a customer threatens to sue your business, right? We have all gone through, or if you haven't, you will, these issues. Try to acquire the mindset of, hey, what if this is the hundredth time that this has happened, right? Like, 
how would I handle it? Oh, you just do this, 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 and it's not a big deal, right? So try to, try to have a, a higher low, per se, all right? Um, just acquire the, the, the mindset of the veteran. So the truth is 80% of the US did not buy or read a book in the last year. You are the lid to your organization. So if you stop growing, your business is gonna stop growing. Your business is either going forward or it's going backwards. There is no stagnation. There is no, let's stay in the middle. It's either going forward or it's going backwards. You choose what you wanna do for your business. I choose to grow myself each and every day and get better and keep moving forward. So to semi wrap this thing up, um, what I will tell you is do not abandon your first location when you're starting to uh, open up multiple locations. That's what got you to where you are today. That's what's paying the bills. That's what's paying your paycheck, possibly. Um, don't abandon it. If things are hitting the wall and everything's going wrong, my focus is gonna be my golden goose egg, right? The thing that got me to where I'm at today. And then I'll focus on that second location, third location, right? Um, so. So I just wanna tell you guys, I know everyone here knows Nike and the brand and hopefully everybody knows their motto. It's my favorite. I love living by that, so just do it. We have so many people that come to us and are like, oh, I wanna do this one day. My goal is this one day. I wanna be where you're at one day, right? So everybody says these things, but how many people are actually putting that into action? So my recommendation is to you guys, if you guys are contemplating, hey, I kinda wanna do this, I wanna own my own business one day, just do it, start taking action. That is the biggest thing. You're referencing back to that ladder picture, just start taking those baby steps, you're gonna make it. You have so many supporters around you, you won't even realize how many people are gonna support you in your decisions. So I wanna encourage you guys, just do it, just start taking action, whatever little steps that they are. Absolutely. No matter what it is in your business, just do it. All right, so before we wrap this thing up, because we've got a couple minutes left, um, I wanted to share with you guys a really, really quick story, okay? Um, should be maybe a 60-second story. Some of you have maybe heard it before, but there was a young entrepreneur, super hungry, literally someone like you or I, just a hungry entrepreneur attending conferences, wanting to grow, wanting to get big, bigger, want, wanted success, right? just super hungry for that knowledge, found a mentor who is exactly where he wanted to be in life, in business, in relationship, had a family, had everything that he wanted, successful, owned multiple businesses that ran without him, all right? So this young entrepreneur seeks out this, this mentor and says, hey mentor, how do I get to where you're at today? How do I be successful? How do I persevere through those challenges and all that stuff, right? He said, you know what, if you want to learn about that, meet me at the beach tomorrow at 6.30 in the, in, in the morning, sharp. So the next day, this young entrepreneur needs, meets this uh, mentor down on the beach, and the mentor goes out into the water, he says, all right, come on out till it gets about knee high. So the young entrepreneur gets out there, he's about knee high. And then the mentor goes a little bit deeper until he's about waist high. He says, come on out. And this young entrepreneur comes out, gets, gets waist high, and he's, he's like, man, what? What is this? Like, we're not, we're, we're, why aren't we talking about business or success or what's, what's going on? Like, why, why are we out here on the beach? So he gets a little further. The mentor gets, gets a little further until he gets about shoulder high, right? And the young entrepreneur comes all the way out. And then the mentor takes his hands, puts it on his shoulders, and pushes him underneath the water. And he holds him there for 30 seconds, and then 60 seconds, and then almost a minute and a half until finally the young entrepreneur jumps out of the water, grasping for air. And it was like, what are you doing? And the mentor says, when you want to succeed as bad as you can breathe, then you will be successful. And so whatever it is in your business, whatever challenge you're going through, absolutely persevere through it. Put God first. Have a great, solid foundation. And you and your business will absolutely flourish. Guys, thank you so much, Will and Larissa.